Hello everyone, I hope everyone's doing well. Uh, I'm just in the London Borough of Tower Hamlets and I'm on a road known as Old Ford Road. Uh, Old Ford Road was named after a, a ford that used to cross the River Lee. Now, we're just coming towards the end of Old Ford Road, just walking towards the end of it. And uh, if we went back in the opposite direction, um, it goes, the Old Ford Road goes all the way to the A12. Now the A12 road go, goes through all of, uh, towards the uh, area of Essex. Uh, Oldfield Road stretches about one mile in length and uh, I'll just turn the camera around. Okay so as we come to the end of it here if we take a look behind us you can see the stretch of Oldfield Road there. Now the building that's in front of us here is known as York Hall. York Hall was built in 1929 as a gymnasium um, Turkish baths are in there, uh, a gym, swimming pool and also sauna inside as well. But not only that it's been used as a gymnasium, it's also used as a main boxing venue. Many world champions, um, past and present, have fought there from the likes of Lennox Lewis, Nigel Benn and also Carl Froch. They have then gone on to have successful careers after fighting here early in their careers and gone to fight on in various locations across the world. It's still a popular uh, leisure centre, uh, but yeah, we will uh, continue to move on. Now, over to the other side there, that you'll see behind the scaffolding, is known as the Dundee Arms Pub. Now, the Dundee Arms Pub was, well, there's been a building present there since 1802. Uh, it could be actually older. Rebuilt in the Victorian period and was noted for its quality draft Guinness. Um, and it's also still to this day benefits from nights or boxing nights at the York Hall Sports Hall there. But we'll just continue to walk along. Now the next building that we'll be filming next, uh, we have to be very care careful with filming because there's children regularly going into this building. And this building is the VNA, the, the, the or some, how I used to know it as a child, the um, the Childhood Museum. Now, the Childhood Museum wasn't actually a childhood museum when it was opened. The Childhood Museum was founded in 1872 as the Bethnal Green Museum, and it was designed by James William Wilde and used to display a variety of collection of different arts uh, at different times. It was then remodelled again as an art museum after the First World War and they actually had a children's section um, as part of the art museum. Now this art, this children's section of the art museum grew larger and larger and larger and the museum was then remodelled in 1974 and the director of the V&A, so Roy Strong, decided to make it a, speci a specialist museum for children. So we're just going to cross over here now. And uh, just recently it's just had another renovation. It opened up again this year and uh, I'll be able to show you a few photos of what it was like inside. And uh, it's, it's a fantastic place to visit. What you've got to remember is also all our museums in, in England are uh, free of charge unless they have a, a um, like an exhibition that you have to pay for a specialised uh, exhibition. <clears throat> yeah, we're just taking a walk along Cambridge Heath Road now. And uh, if we continue south from here, this goes all the way to the London Hospital, which is on Whitechapel Road. Now, the reason I bring you down this side part of Cambridge Heath Road is because of these buildings here. This street here, or this side street where these buildings are, is known as Paradise Row. Now, the most recent... Um, house to be sold down here was in 2022 
and uh, it sold for 1.26 million. But the, the reason why I bring you down here is because of this gentleman here. Daniel Mendoza, or at the time he was known as Mendoza the Jew. He, made, he wrote a book, going back to our, uh, our boxing uh, story that was talking about earlier with York Hall. He actually wrote a book called The Art of Boxing. Now, in the 18th century, boxing was very popular, but they, boxing, they uh, adopted more of a brawling kind of style. And uh, Daniel Mendoza decided when he wrote this book, he adopted a different kind of style, a more defensive technique style. And uh, he made great success from this. And uh, it was very popular in the area. And also a lot of the rich people would have hired him and his goons to actually um, protect him um, as like protection costs. And uh, yeah, so that's the uh, Paradise Road there. Um, It was also um, asked to suppress an old riot. It was called the Old Price Riots in 1809. And um, the riots were in response to an increase in theatre price tickets in Covent Garden area. Um, Mendoza, as I say, was a, a thug at, in, at sometimes, uh, but this is because he was hired by the rich to do so. And he was known as one of the toughest people in the area. In the corner there, you had the Salmon and Ball Pub. Built in the 1970s, it was named, uh, it was named Moros, and uh, it was owned by none other than England's legendary captain, Sir Bobby Moore. Sadly, his success uh, on the pitch did not spread to in the pub. Um, it was actually, he actually closed after a few years after uh, owning the pub, and he decided to actually sell it. Now, the church that you'll see in the corner here, which is across the road, sorry, just concentrating. There we go. Okay, so this pub, um, pub, <laughs> sorry, church here is known as St. John's Church. It was built by Sir John Soane in 1828. It survived the Blitz and is a grade one listed building. Now it looks quite jab on the outside, and, uh, but in the inside, it, it, it looks spectacular. Now the last place I'm going to show you Sorry if this seems a bit rushed. I've only got about half an hour to park my London taxi, so uh, I have to be quite quick with all this. Now, you're probably seeing the distance here, what is known as the Bethnal Green Memorial. And it's to commemorate uh, 173 Londoners who died on the 3rd of March, 1943. Uh, what happened was um, there was a, a train station which we'll, we'll just come to the steps of in a second so before we get run over now you may just see but uh in front of these cars here as they're going past is a um a, uh, some stairs that go underneath the ground and this is known as bethnal green train station and this during the second world war this was known as a um an air raid shelter and what happened was, whenever there was a bombing that happened in the East End of London, because the East End of London got more heavily bombed than the rest of London, it, um, the, the members of the public would have gone down this very uh, staircase here. Now, I'll just show you briefly around here. And this is where the staircase would have been on that dreadful night. So, 
Now, we're just going to go around the corner here so we're out of people's way because quite a bit still opened as a train station. And what happened was that evening was there was the, the sound of um, fire, um, the sound of uh, bombs landing. Well, this is what the, uh, the residents in the area thought it was. And so they, members of the public began to quickly rush down the stairs. And what they weren't to know was that actually it was the, uh, the, the sound of anti-aircraft fire in just uh, nearby Victoria Park, which is uh, in that direction behind these trees here. People began to panic and they rushed down the stairs. And as they rushed down the stairs, unfortunately, a, a woman with a boy um, tripped and fell. This caused people behind them to trip and fall over the top of them. And people were still rushing in behind and crushing the people in front of them down below. This resulted in 173 Londoners being, being killed in this um, disaster. This was the uh, largest single incident of the largest loss of life during the, in the Second World War. This memorial here is known as the Stairway to Heaven. And uh, these are just some of the, uh, the quotes of some survivors you may be able to see. Hopefully you can. Very tragic indeed. And uh, at the time of when it happened also, the authorities, believe it or not, were, were told to keep their mouths shut. And the reason for that was because of the heavy bombing that was going on during the Blitz. For the Londoners to hear that 170 people, men, women and children, were killed here, this would have been terrible for morale. And uh, so they were told to keep quiet until some years later. And some years later, they built this fantastic monument here. Okay, guys, well, I hope you liked this video and uh, enjoyed walking you around today. I'm going to try and do a few more of these videos as much as I can. And... Uh, yeah, no, it was good fun today. It's the first time I've done this, so uh, taking a walk around, mix it up a little bit. And uh, I'm going to rush back to the taxi now because uh, I'm looking like I might get a ticket soon. <laughs> and uh, all the very best, and uh, hopefully I'll see you again soon. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and if you did, if you could press the like and subscribe button below, I'll be extremely grateful. Thanks for watching.